We have a generator that's converted so we can keep um, the uh, refrigeration because we do do raw dairies here. Um, our, our, and I know we've got a bunch of vegans here, so I'm not going to go into that too much. But we do have raw, um, <coughs> unpasteurized milk that needs refrigeration, as well as some of the other products that we have. So that's our biodiesel. I do get a tremendous amount of help from the University of Florida. I am um, uh, one of their, I did acquire my master's degree through the University of Florida, and so this is just something that I've played with. And um, we're able to actually, you know, we make money by selling the biodiesel. And we have hippies from all over the country that come by and fill up on their way down to the Keys or back to Maine or off to San Francisco. So it's really, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Um, we do use horse manure here on the property that's sold. So this is cured and aged. And as you can see, my son was eating watermelon. And now we have baby watermelon. He's spitting his seeds, and now there's watermelon coming out of the compost. He's six. <laughs> and you'll see in the back gardens that he planted all the papayas, too, and we've got a papaya farm back there. <laughs> so it's been a lot of fun. And then we'll move on. Are you off the grid? Rain barrels here. I hold rain barrel workshops. And um, we get people to make their own rain barrels. You get the kids out here to paint them and get your hot glue gun and stick some sparkles on there. Or, um, but we collect rainwater here. The rainwater is able to water the plants. And they notice that our plants um, love rainwater much more than they like city water. So think about that if you guys have a garden or are thinking about having a garden. This out here is our hydroponic herb garden, and hydroponics is um, one of the ways that we grow food here out on the farm. Uh, this is a drip irrigation system, and it's actually very, very easy. However, my professor is the creator of this particular system, which is called Vertigrow, and um, it's about stacking polystyrene pots on top of each other and we use a coconut core and the coconut core is the medium that the plant grows in so it's not actual soil um, so with the coconut core it's a very clean product however it does need a nutrient a fertilizer um, Tim Carpenter my professor up at UF he has his own synthetic fertilizer that he uses um, because here on this farm we are 100% organic and we only use growing organic methods, um, I choose to use, make my own earth syrup, fertilizer, whatever. I don't like the term fertilizer because it's, it's just a synthetic word and it just doesn't really work. So we call earth nourishing or earth syrup or earth candy, whatever you want to call it. Um, so with that being said, um, I do use different things. Um, I use uh, coffee grounds and honey mixture um, or a molasses of some sort. We, uh, all the old vegetables and stuff that we don't compost, we throw in the garbage disposal and we use that. I dilute it, um, you know, three times in distilling and come a liquid purifier. We use chicken manure out on the farm or a horse manure or a cow and um, so we use a bunch of different methods sometimes they work sometimes they don't so you know you're kind of picking and choosing which plants go where and which likes you know the peppers and the tomatoes love the chicken manure um, however you know the herbs don't like it as much as that so you know it's all a balance and when you're making it yourself you just keep trying till something fruit grows from it <laughs> so um, so this system has been a little more challenging obviously I'm a soil scientist so we promote mostly soil and the minerals and um, chemists in the soil base is a bit different than growing through hydroponics so um, 
So, but we have a lot of fun, and we like to show all the different ways that we grow here on the farm. Um, you had a question? Well, what about uh, worms? Worm castings. We sell worm castings here. Worm castings are a great way to nourish the soil. Yep. Um, it doesn't work so great in the hydroponics, but works wonderfully in the soil-based gardens. Um, we don't use pesticides, herbicides, or fungicides on the property. So um, we do get bugs, and we do get disease, and um, you know sometimes we win and sometimes we lose, and that's you know the gamble in farming. However, we do um, raise our own pests here on site at the farm, and I raise green lace wings. Um, I also raise ladybugs, uh, a specific ladybug that's predaceous to white fly, which is Delphustus pusillus. And they all live here on the farm and have a particular job to do on the farm. Praying mantis you may find on the farm. And then we have our um, aviary, the bees in the back, which do all of our pollinating. So um, we're really proud of that. Some, like I said, you know, it doesn't work 100% all the time, but we, we do a pretty good job. We do a pretty good job. <laughs> so we, we take a lot of pride in it and, um, and we just keep trugging on. So it's, it's good stuff. Can I ask you a um, question? Sure. Um, are the pots that are being fed from the top, they go down the bottom. Is there underground picking it back up again? No. Oh, so it just goes to the ground and just keeps going? Correct. Okay. Yeah, the system just runs three times a day for six minutes. And in the summertime, sometimes we do four times a day, you know, in the summer just because of the heat. But um, the system, it doesn't, you know, we don't have a whole lot of waste. You would have a lot more, but we chose to put the pots on the bottom. And we do do eggplant out of here um, and butternut squash and the heavier items, your cantaloupe, your watermelons, and then they'll just trail all along the side. So, um, we did have a situation which we had to pull some things out, so we're starting back over. So that's why you see some bare spots. And we, we rely heavily on volunteers. So volunteers really help make this place go and run. Um, let's go to the aquaponics garden, and I'll show you another form of... Enlightened Aquaponics was um, really gracious enough to come in and install this system for us and um, they were using it as a, as a showpiece as well. Um, they, they built these systems for the backyard gardener and all the way for commercial, um, commercial properties and uh, he's really done an amazing job. I had, my initial system was just PVC pipes and a 55 gallon drum of water and a little fish pump that puts the water in and he's like, oh Chelsea, Chelsea, you know. Um, we'd really like to uh, have their showpiece and so they built this. This system is a really, really amazing system. Um, and Colin has really taken it, they've taken it to a whole nother level. More so than we expected yeah, when we right? first got into it. <laughs> so, um, how the system works is we have raised koi and tilapia. And the tilapia, obviously, once they become mature, we harvest them and we sell them at the market. Um, the tilapia and the koi, as you can see, you've got three tiers and three levels of ponds over here to my left, your right. <coughs> and um, the fish excrement is the natural food that pumps up and feeds the plants. So this particular system um, is completely self-sustaining. So what happens is the nutrients pump up, they fill up, and they self-level themselves into these tanks over here. The plants are getting the perfect food and nutrition that they need to grow. The water is constantly flowing, so once it fills up, there's a suction, it comes down, and then it fills into these floating ponds. 
and then back into this recycling. So, but what happens once it gets to these points and to that point as well, as you will see, let's find a nice big one. If you could pull one of these stalks, the whole little net pot, and just pull out that whole head of celery and lift it up for everybody to see. What happens at this point right here is you can see all the, it's, um, the root system is floating in water, and at that point, what happens is the water is being cleaned. It's being cleaned, uh, the bacteria is being cleaned through it, it's oxygenating the water for the fish to be able to breathe, and the fish are now getting fresh water again. So as the process runs through, the root base is what naturally cleans the water back into um, its system. So it's a really amazing process. The system works, it works all over the world, and um, we are lucky enough to have it here. I've dabbled in it a little bit um, by having ponds and stuff at the home, and you know, we grew you know, grass and all kinds of silly stuff, and um, Colin's really just taken it to the next level. So hopefully we'll be able to grow a million pounds of food here next, within the next year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You laugh. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're gonna make a dollar. That's a million. Do you know how much you grow right now on your basis? This is, the system was just completed. So this is our first. So um, all that is being documented as we speak. So we'll see exactly where we, where we stand at the end of the growing season. And then we'll be able to put it all in writing um, probably this summer. What do you think the fish? The fish are being fed. Um, we do give them some rabbit pellets because we have rabbits on the farm, and the rabbits eat completely organically. So they um, mostly eat that, and their um, diet is of organic fruits and vegetables and some organic timothy. So they eat the rabbit excrement. So as you can see, nothing goes to waste around here. <laughs> Not even the rabbit food. So. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. And can you tell us what you're growing here, Chelsea? Sure. We have a variety of different greens. We have chard. You have um, field greens. We have some uh, red oak, green leaf, and some um, mixed greens here. That's celery. And some more chard and basil. And um, here we have tomatoes. There was cucumbers in the back. We have peppermint, spearmint, and um, I see some carrots. We've just, we've been harvesting and transplanting. What else we got in there? Lemongrass? Oh, geez, yeah, we got some. Um, uh, oregano. Basil. Yeah, I saw the basil. Okay, yeah. And um, he's got a different variety I of just planted um, some more tomatoes. Beets and some heirlooms. peppers, some yeah, habaneros. Beets, peppers. Um, we have a fig tree right there, a miracle fruit tree that's growing, a blueberry that we dug out of the trash, and we see a couple leaves on there. Yeah, hopefully it'll make it. Maybe it'll make it. And uh, yeah, kales and cabbage and uh, broccoli. So pretty much just about everything that grows our soil based garden is growing. So. That is a mixed green. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Um, absolutely. Why not? So I have another question. This is not being grown in soil, so is this considered organic? Absolutely. Okay. I mean, yeah, it's it's grown in water. Okay. Water is completely a natural system, and okay. everything we feed the fish is organic, so why okay. not? Right? <laughs> Do you have any trees? I'm sorry? Trees? Trees? On the farm. Yeah, we've got trees on the farm. We've got bananas. You can see the bananas right there growing out of the compost. So we've got bananas that grow right there. Um, and you'll see papayas in the back and mango. And uh, Any questions? 
back here. This is our seeding tray. This is, um, Colin has, um, he seeds over here in the uh, seed tray section. And the water actually can flow and just runs down. It's slanted ever so slightly. So the water goes in, feeds this, this system as well by just turning on, um, he just switches his uh, little gear there. And then and the water will completely flow and so it'll just run the entire system. So not only there, but it goes through here, and then that one goes up and around. And it all ends right up in just the um, overflow. Thank you. No problem. Mm -hmm. Not at all. And all the fish excrement is the perfect food. And if you ask anybody if you're having issues with nutrition and even in your soil based garden, you just use seaweed. I mean, most people do. You know, and there's how many different seaweed that you buy at the store that's, you know, synthetic at that point, you know. So, yeah, we just sprinkle a little seaweed when you're having some nutrition issues, and that'll bring some potassium in the You got it. Yeah. All right, so we will move on to the rest of our tour. Sure. Right. Um, no, the turtles are rescued. All the animals here on the property have been rescued. Even though we started out as Mirando Farms, we didn't, all we had was our dog. So, um, and little by little, animals started to show up. Um, the pigs were uh, a Christmas present that had gone wrong three years ago. And um, they arrived two days after Christmas. And we said, oh, cheapers, we're a farm. People are starting to drop off their animals. We came out, there was two um, dog crates with a note saying a Christmas present gone wrong. And then we tried to get them to the Wildlife Care Center, and they said, we're completely booked. We can't even, you know, put anything here. And it's like everybody thinks at Christmas time they're going to do something special, and it really normally <coughs> turns out pretty bad. So then that happened, and then we had a family in Hollywood harboring the goats in their house with their 10 children, and the city and neighbors didn't like that very much. So then the goats came here, and then chickens one by one started to come, and um, though the chickens and the ducks were Easter presents that Grandma and Grandpa bought the grandkids, and then they got big, and they were like, now what do we do? So they brought them here. Um, so it's one thing after another. <clears throat> we have um, the turtles and bunny rabbits. The bunny rabbits were people were, you know, they kind of lost their home and they were going into apartments and stuff like that. And um, so a few of the animals have been for that reason that they've come here. We do all of our own composting here. The composting you can see is um, what we use in the raised bed soils. Um, all of our vegetables are all um, organic, so we have a nice, thick, black, rich um, compost that we use to grow most of our food here. The cabbage, and we've got jackpots that we also fill, and the jackpots are like big socks that we fill with soil. And um, they're really amazing. They have done, I really love them because it's like growing in a great big sock. It allows moisture and it allows air to the roots and it really comes off with a really nice finished product. Plus you roll over the top of the bag and the snails can't get inside. <laughs> we got <Wow>. snails. <laughs> so um, we're, we're having a lot of fun with that system. This is our second year with the jackpots and um, it was a professor, again from University of Florida in the Ag Department, who created this system and um, we all tried it last year, and it's it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. We use um, the jackpot system on four other gardens that we do. We have a two-acre garden that um, was provided by the BRHPC and the city of Dania Beach. And um, we have two acres, and we're growing 3,500 um, uh, 
lettuces and greens and all different, you know, cabbages. And we have a full farm, functioning farm out there. And that was provided through a grant, through our 501c3, um, which is called Broward County Community Outreach. And that is um, Miranda Farms' nonprofit, which allows us to be able to go out, build these gardens, educate people on nutrition and health. And there's quite a few different components depending on the grant that we receive. But um, allows us to build these gardens and have people, <clears throat> we call it the patch garden, and it's people's access to community health. So, um, and community horticulture, I'm sorry. I got that mixed up, but the Health Foundation is the one who funded it, so <laughs> we'll put health in there, right? So it's been it's been a really amazing journey. We're having a lot of fun um, teaching sustainability and educating people on getting really a lot closer to their food source. You know, um, being an organic farmer and farm it, it, it does have its challenges, and you know, the USDA has their organic certification which to me means a whole lot of nothing. Um, you know, the government just keeps putting a little more pesticides, a little more fungicides, and they can still call it organic. Well, I don't believe that should be true. So, um, but, and there's plenty of organic gardeners that don't let me anywhere on their farm. So, it kind of just goes to show ya. you. Get to know your food, learn how to grow something, supplement your food with your, your local farmer's markets. Um, ask the questions, you know, find out who's growing what, where is it coming from. I don't necessarily sell everything certified organic, but we do have it naturally grown. And we do let you know where it's coming from. And we do just try to educate and let people know. And, you know, um, most of the farms in California are in the northern part of the state. <clears throat> and they've had serious, serious freeze. So we've been in touch back and forth. and. Um, none of the greens will be coming out of California for the next, for quite a while. So it doesn't take long to grow your own greens. So if you don't want to pay six, seven bucks for some spinach, you might want to consider growing it yourself. And I'll show you. We also run a CSA. I'm sorry before I get ahead of myself. We run a community supported agriculture. And um, this year we have 88 members, which is really super neat. Last year was my first year doing it, and we had um, about 36, 37, and this is my second year, and we have over 88 uh, people who invest in us in the summertime to help us keep stay afloat and keep the farm functioning. Obviously, we don't get any dividends or subsidies from the government. Um, we are just a small mom-and-pop little farm. We work with about 13, at different times, 13 to 19 different organic growers throughout the state that grow us food. There's some are large gardens, some um, people just spe are specialties in what they grow. And um, at this point, they invest in the summertime and in the fall, winter, and spring, we in turn grow food for them. So you come every Saturday and you pick up either your full bushel or your half bushel, and it's what's been locally grown um, in within, I say 120 miles of here, which is 90% of where it comes from. However, I do go to Dover, Florida and to Jordan Farms, which is an organic farm in Dover that grows us strawberries. So, um, and he's really gracious. We recycle our little pots and he gives us 10 cents. And so, you know, we really just try to keep it sustainable since I have to drive so far to go get them because we really want to reduce our carbon footprint. But he does grow the finest organic strawberries in this entire state. So, and if you haven't gotten them, we've got some still here available. But they're sweet and they taste like real strawberries and Driscoll's can fly the coop. <laughs>
work between her and her garden because she doesn't have access to one at her house. And we have um, about six or seven different local restaurants that as well come to the uh, that also want locally grown produce, so we grow them arugula and a lot of the Italian restaurants want arugula and basil and, you know, oreganos and stuff like that. Who are the restaurants? Market 17 is one of the restaurants. Tap 42 right behind us here is one of the restaurants. Bistro Mezzaluna, Casablanca, uh, Casablanca Cafe, and we have Valentino's up here down the street, and the Grateful Palette. Are some of them? Oh, Foxy Browns and Coconuts. And the Oyster Bar. I could probably just keep going on. Yeah. Right? Do you have on your website like, the name of the restaurants? Wait, I, sure. I'll make sure we do that. Yeah. If I haven't, if he hasn't done it already, we'll make sure we put that up there. So, um, <clears throat> and in turn, you know, we do have some individuals who like to come out and garden. And as you can see, somebody didn't pick their broccoli and it's going to seed. But I'll save the seed. <laughs> I'll come in here and save seeds. And we have peppers, and it all depends on what the consumer wants. Arugula, flat leaf parsley, you got celery growing in the garden. And just to let you know, the largest celery, organic celery producer um, in the country has um, folded his farm. So again, we lost one more wonderful farmer to progress, I don't know what you want to call it, just to losing another farmer. Um, we don't have the details yet why he closed the farm, but farming isn't always easy. <laughs> and it does have uh, propose a lot of challenges. What workshops do you offer here? We do organic gardening 101. We do rain barrel workshops. We do health and nutrition workshops. If you go to our website and on our calendar, it's filled with a variety, um, just a mirage of different things that's happening. We do master gardening here as well. I'm one of the master gardeners. And um, so I teach a course there, and I'm also a master naturalist. So I've done master naturalist one, two, three, and four. So um, so we do a lot of that as well. Um, we do a lot of outreach, and we also do um, I do farm tours for about four to five hundred uh, different classes throughout the school year here. So we keep pretty busy, right? We also, my husband and I started beekeeping about two years ago, so we have our aviary back here, and the honeybees do all their work. Um, we collect the honey here, so the raw honey is unfiltered, and it's 100% raw, and we just spin it out of the um, hives uh, when we're done, and we put them back in, and you'll see that we do have raw honey that is for sale. Um, eating honey, local honey, it helps people alleviate a lot of symptoms with their allergies and it's also a local um, or a natural uh, anti-inflammatory and what else does it do? I'm trying to think of all these different things. So anyway, the community garden was started because I sat on a bunch of uh, community garden committees and um, they all talked about building one and nobody ever did it. So um, I was really upset and I told them all they should be fired and um, these big organizations get all this big funding and then nobody builds any gardens they just talk about it and so anyway um, after that I wasn't on their garden committee anymore so then I didn't have to show up and so I asked my husband to build me this garden and um, since then we've had a lot of success with it so it's been really nice to see people out here and getting their hands dirty and do be as passionate about gardening as I am. So with that being said, I'm gonna let you enjoy the rest of your afternoon. I <coughs> thank you all so much for being here. And um, it thank means you. a lot to our little farm when we have really nice, pleasant guests that come and like to visit. <laughs>